Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about z-scores. Specifically, we're going to talk about what are they and also why do we use them. So we really want to start with the definition of, well, what is a z-score? A z-score is the number of standard deviations either above or below the mean a data point in the distribution is located. So key word there is location. We're looking at where is our data point. Is it to the right of our mean? Is it to the left of the mean? Is it in the tail region? So how far away is it? So is it a very unusual score or is it a score that we would expect to get? So we have this nice little equation to talk about z-scores. If we had a sample, then we would have z is equal to x minus x bar over s. So x is our data point. It's the point we're trying to figure out. We're trying to say where is it located compared to the mean x bar and the standard deviation s of the sample. If we happen to have a population, then same kind of thing happens. We would still have x, which is our data point, but we would want to compare to mu, our mean, and sigma, our standard deviation. So just a slight little difference between if we have a sample or a population, but otherwise this conversion looks the same. So let's try that. Suppose the length of movies is normally distributed with a mean of 96.5 and a standard deviation of 10.8. Let's find the z-score for a movie that is 75 minutes long. So we're going to start by taking our data point 75. We are going to subtract the mean at 96.5 and then we divide by the standard deviation of 10.8. Throw that in your calculator and you get negative 1.99. Let me give you this little word of advice. If you do try to put this in your calculator all at once, which is absolutely fine, you want to make sure you put parentheses around the 75 and the 96.5. So you want it to look like this before you hit enter. It's easy to make a simple mistake and get the wrong number. So what does this mean? What does negative 1.99 mean? Well, it says this movie is almost two standard deviations shorter than the average mean length of movie times in the sample. So the negative says smaller, positive says larger, and that number that you get says how far away is it. So to show you a little bit more about that, I'm going to go over to Desmos and kind of look at where is this located. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in normal dist, there's the normal distribution, and it says, well, what's the mean, what's the standard deviation? So we said the mean was 96.5 and we had a standard deviation of 10.8. So what it drew is a normal distribution with a mean of 96.5, which you can see at the top here. If I click on there, there's 96.5 as the mean median mode, standard deviation of 10.8. And I'm going to click this find cumulative. So I can put in here this 75. So what 75 does, it tells me the percent of movies that are 75 minutes long or shorter. So when I look here, I got this 0 0.02325. That says about 2.3% of movies are less than 75 minutes, according to this data that I gave you. You can also see on here that this is in the tail region over on the left. So it is about two standard deviations to the left of that mean. That was 10.8. So let's look again. Suppose this time I have the same mean of 96.5 and the same standard deviation of 10.8, but I want to know the z-score for a movie that is 105 minutes long. So I do my conversion. I do 105, my data point, minus the mean 96.5, divide by 10.8, the standard deviation, it says 0.79. So this time, this says this movie is 0.79 standard deviations longer than the average movie in the sample, so I'm looking at something bigger. Again, I could go back to Desmos and look at that. I'm going to take out the 75, put in 105, and now I can see I'm over to the right. Remember our mean at 96.5, so 105 is bigger. So over on the right, it says, this says about 78.4% of movies are less than 105 minutes long. So this gives us an idea of how this 105 relates to the mean. It's bigger. It's kind of close, right? It's only a little bit to the right this time, but it gives me an idea of the dispersion too. So let's look at another application. Let's say that the amount of rain a city receives in June is normally distributed with a mean of 8.4 and a standard deviation of 1.4 inches. We want to find the percent corresponding to the city getting over 9.8 inches of rain. So we can pull out the things we have. We have 8.4 as our mean, we have 1.4 as our standard deviation, and then our data point is 9.8. 
So this time, because it's only asking for a percent, I'm not going to do the conversion to Z. I'm just going to go straight to Desmos and look at the percent from the graph. So I'm still in normal distribution, but I want to tell it my mean this time 8.4, standard deviation 1.4. <clears throat> I already have it checked to find cumulative, but I do want to hit the zoom fit so I can see this. So now here's my mean 8.4. So what are we trying to figure out? We want to find out the percent of time they're going to get more than 9.8 inches. So I'm going to go over here to the minimum and say that's 9.8 and to the maximum I want to get rid of a max I don't have a max here but it's more than 9.8 so see it switched to infinity so it says the probability that the city gets more than 9.8 inches in June is going to be 15 point let's call it 87 percent so I can immediately see that this is a number greater than the mean it's a little farther out from the mean and then because it said greater than I go to the min so knowing that we have this table and knowing we can use Desmos and other technologies to figure all of this out, you might be thinking, well, why do we need z-scores? And one reason is that they help us compare data that are on different scales. So for example, according to the Digest of Education Statistics, the mean SAT score for the state of Indiana in 2019 was 1,074 with a standard deviation of 168. The Condition of College and Career Readiness 2019 Indiana Key Findings reports gives an ACT mean of 22.5, where the standard deviation is 5.8. So you can see we have these two different tests, SAT, ACT, that score completely differently. So how can we tell how good a student did if we had two different tests being taken? So here's an example. So say we had two students from Indiana and they have these test scores. Student A took the SAT and made it 1,350. Student B took the ACT and made a score of 28. So which student did better? So to figure that out, we can convert the scores to z-scores to find out how each score relates to the mean of the test distribution. So which one is farther away from the mean is a better score. So the higher z-score, the better somebody performed. So let's look at student A. Student A made a 1350. The mean was 1074. The standard deviation was 168. So when we convert that, we get a z-score of 1.643. So this student was 1.643 standard deviations above the mean. We go to student B. Student B made a 28. The average was a 22.5, so that looks really good. We need to divide by the standard deviation 5.8, which says this is 0.9483 standard deviations from the mean, so really close to one. But now we have a way to compare these two students. So student A had the higher score, so if we had a limited access program where we could only let one of them in, maybe we would lean towards student A because their SAT score was higher. So I hope that helps you get a picture of what z-scores are, what we use them for, and I want you to think for now, location, location, location.